Spending $50,000 on a car is usually a terrible financial decision, and a few years ago I thought I was crazy when I splurged on a brand new Tesla because before then, the most money I ever spent on a car was $12,000 for a used Pontiac. But recent news just came out that claims a Tesla Model 3 is actually cheaper than the average new car in the US, and although that's quite impressive, that stat is only about the purchase price, so it got me thinking, in terms of total cost of ownership, how does an expensive Tesla Model 3 actually stack up when compared to cheaper popular cars? Well, next month I'll hit five years of ownership of my 2018 Tesla Model 3, and in this video, I'll show you exactly how much it has cost me to own it, and we'll also see if it's actually been a better financial decision than buying the most popular best-selling sedan, the Toyota Camry. Now first, let's calculate my total cost of ownership for my Tesla after nearly five years, starting with the upfront cost. My 2018 Tesla Model 3 is one of the first production rear wheel drive versions with the long range battery. It has the standard 18 inch wheels and after factoring in all the optional add-ons, including red paint, premium upgrade package, enhanced autopilot, plus destination fees, the order price for this particular model was $56,000. But one of the biggest reasons I bought a Tesla Model 3 was because I knew I'd be eligible for the full $7,500 federal tax credit, which I did receive. So that technically brought the price down to $48,500. However, I did need to install an outlet in my garage to charge the car, which ended up being quite expensive because my garage is the furthest possible length away from my electrical panel, and that cost me $940 after rebates. That means my total upfront cost was $49,440. Now let's talk about my service costs for my Model 3 so far. In the beginning, before my new vehicle warranty expired, there were a few minor repairs that were done. These included a windshield wiper clicking noise, a driver door handle not closing properly, a bad LTE connection board, and driver door clicking noise. Now these were all covered for free under the warranty and fixed by a mobile technician at my location. But since I drive about 24,000 miles per year, the new vehicle warranty expired after about two years of ownership. So here are all the repairs and maintenance that I've paid for out of pocket. Now Tesla has a recommended but not required two year service checkup where they service brake calipers and brake fluid, which cost me $390. My driver's side window buttons needed repaired, which cost $94. My charge port door stopped automatically opening and closing, which cost $311. My driver's seat occupancy sensor needed replaced, which cost $99. And finally, the small 12 volt battery that provides auxiliary power needed replaced, which cost $109. So all of my maintenance and out of warranty repairs cost a total of $1,003. Now, as for insurance and tires, I pay about $150 a month for full coverage insurance on my Tesla, which comes to about $9,000 so far. I've only replaced my tires twice for a total of $1,411. Now, if you're curious, I ordered both tire sets from Tire Rack, and the tires are the Vredestein Quattrack Pros, which have served me very well. Now, nearly all of my tire rotations were done for free at a local tire shop that gives Tesla owners free rotations as a clever business strategy. But for my last two rotations, I decided to just pay Tesla to come to my location out of convenience sake, and they did it for $50 each. Now, this means my total cost for tires and insurance so far is $10,511. Now, as you can tell, financial decisions are more important than ever, especially now that people are paying twice as much for new cars as they were before the pandemic. And when it comes to investing, becoming diversified in a newer way is crucial, especially now that major asset managers such as Goldman Sachs are saying the ideal allocation for stocks may have shrunk from 60% to around 45%. So what do they recommend you do with that difference? invest in alternatives and real assets like fine art. They say it can not only protect your purchasing power, but the last time inflation was this high, contemporary art prices averaged 20% yearly appreciation, even outpacing real estate, which is why I partnered with today's sponsor, Masterworks. In the last 12 months, they paid out over $28 million in total net returns to investors. With these results, Masterworks has had to acquire and release more art on their platform to meet demand, and offerings have sold out in minutes but they gave special access for my audience to skip the waitlist. Simply click the link in the description below to get started right now. And that brings us to the most interesting cost so far for my Model 3, charging the car. 
I've driven 120,000 miles and in my Model 3's odometer settings, you can see the total energy consumed to drive that amount is 30,361 kilowatt hours. Now my total charging cost is split into two categories, home charging and supercharging. Now the problem is I've had free supercharging for the majority of my Model 3 ownership, but I'm going to pretend that I had to pay for all my supercharging so it can be a more fair comparison. Now, based on my driving habits, my best guess is that 94% of my charging is done at home and 6% is done at superchargers when traveling. Now, this might sound very lopsided, but keep in mind the first 300 miles of a road trip is considered home charging since I leave with a full battery. Plus, many times during traveling, I get free charging wherever I'm staying, such as hotels and Airbnbs. Now, this means the total energy pumped into my car at home is 28,539 kilowatt hours. And when it's at home, my Model 3 charges overnight, which is considered off-peak, and that usually has a cheaper rate than during the day. In my city of Louisville, Kentucky, off-peak electricity costs 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That means my total home charging cost is about $2,853. And that leaves 1,821 kilowatt hours of electricity that I've consumed at superchargers on trips. According to multiple search results, the average supercharger cost is 25 cents per kilowatt hour. And that means my total supercharging cost, if I actually paid for it, is $455, which brings my total estimated charging cost to $3,308. So if we add up all these, the upfront cost, the service and maintenance cost, the tires and insurance, and the charging cost, it brings my Model 3's grand total cost of ownership to $64,262 after nearly five years and 120,000 miles. That equates to an ownership cost of right around 54 cents per mile. Now, let's see what a Toyota Camry would have cost me. Now, for this comparison, I'm choosing the higher end Toyota Camry XS EV6 since it's the most comparable to my Tesla Model 3 in terms of performance and features. This Camry's MSRP, including destination fee, was $35,835 in 2018. Now, as far as maintenance goes, Toyota provides free oil changes and tire rotations for the first 25,000 miles. After that, an average conventional oil change costs around $50 and is needed every 5,000 miles, which comes to a total cost of $950 for 19 oil changes. Now, according to RepairPal.com, the annual repair cost for a Camry is $388, but since that probably includes oil changes, that leaves all other maintenance costs to be around $990. And according to fueleconomy.gov, this Camry has a combined 26 miles per gallon efficiency for city and highway driving. To travel 120,000 miles, this Camry would need 4,615 gallons of gas. And based on the current national average cost of gasoline, which is $3.47 per gallon, that brings the total estimated fuel cost to $16,014. If we add all that together, the Toyota Camry's upfront cost, the estimated maintenance cost, the estimated fuel cost and a similar insurance and tire cost that brings the grand total cost of Camry ownership to $64,300 after five years and 120,000 miles. That means for my personal situation, a Tesla Model 3 and a Toyota Camry have the exact same estimated total cost of ownership after 120,000 miles. Of course, this comparison can be construed many different ways. For example, I could choose to compare the cheapest entry level Camry, which has a lower upfront cost and better gas mileage but the features and ownership experience would be much different. And here are two really good reasons for choosing the Tesla. First, if we assume gas prices stay above electricity prices, and since electric vehicles generally need less maintenance compared to gas cars, then the longer I own my Tesla, the more savings I should see. Secondly, the Tesla Model 3 upfront cost has come way down compared to 2018. Now there is a more affordable standard range Model 3 that has 40 fewer miles of estimated range than mine, but with the full federal tax credit, it would cost less than $40,000 and it would be right around the same price of a high-end Camry. So overall, based on this comparison, I think if you are planning to buy a car and keep it for at least 10 years, then an electric vehicle like a Tesla Model 3 seems to be the best option for most people. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share with others who would benefit of knowing the actual truth surrounding Tesla ownership costs. Subscribe to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future. My name is Andy. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.